All right, and now our five-minute main event prediction for a great main event. This is one of the better fights that we've seen in recent memory. Yeah, Paul Felder, the Irish Dragon, taking on the Hangman Dan Hooker. Matt, I know you're very excited about very. this, and this is one of the most competitive and compelling matchups at 155 pounds that we've had in some time. Of course, we have Habib and Tony Ferguson coming up. Cross your fingers, the fifth time's a charm. But this fight is set to go down this Saturday from Auckland, New Zealand. You have the hometown guy, City Kickboxing Zone, Dan Hooker, who's been on a run since the Barboza fight. And for Paul Felder, it's five straight wins at 155 pounds. You lump in a loss at 170 to Mike Perry, which was a tough one because he broke his arm early on, and that was a very close it fight. Was. Matt, I know you're very excited about this fight. What are some of the qualities that each of these guys bring into this fight that really match up quite well? Uh, these guys other? are not only two of the best strikers in the UFC, these guys have two of the best chins in the UFC. And when you put just kind of that all together, it basically means... You're going to get probably a fight of the night. That's what I would assume. Paul Felder, I would give the power advantage to. But Dan Hooker, I do think, is a little bit faster. That's that's really the only difference between these two guys. Like, that's how close the matchup it is. Both phenomenal kickboxers. Uh, Paul Felder, a little bit more Muay Thai heavy. He throws a lot of spinning techniques, which is good, but it gets him in trouble sometimes because he'll kind of span them at a certain point. And just for cardio-wise... Uh, it's not the best idea. Interesting fact, neither guy's fought in a 25-minute uh, main event in the UFC at least before, so it will be interesting to just kind of see how both guys plays, especially with uh, Dan Hooker being in front of his home crowd. It'll be interesting to see, will he rise to the occasion? It'll, I'm very excited for this fight, as you can tell. <laughs> Paul Felder has an X factor, though. We brought it up earlier. When both guys are really good strikers, but one guy has a little bit of wrestling, it's not that Paul Felder's going to go out there and take down like Tony Ferguson. I doubt he could take down like Dustin Poirier. But against a guy who is predominantly a striker, he might be able to use that tool to his advantage. Felder's best position, other than a Muay Thai clinch against the cage, when he's on top, reigning ground and pound, he's got some of the better ground and pound in all the UFC. I always point back to the Charles Oliveira fight, where he was in his guard, just raining down elbows at him. It was really hard to watch, honestly. But Dan Hooker cannot be taken lightly. We saw in the James Vick fight, and I know James Vick gets knocked out a lot. It's kind of a meme at this point. But Dan Hooker, just the way that he did it with his... He kind of hoary matched with Altair and Woodley, where he switched stances mid-combination, threw a big overhand left and knocked him out. Dan Hooker's real tricky that way. He's very, you know, look over here, and then I'll do something else on the other side. Kind of that city kickboxing. Very faint heavy as well. If he starts feigning early and Felder's biting on a lot of them, it's going to be a hard night for Felder. But it, it honestly, like you said, it could be a better matched uh, main event. And I mean, you look at the pedigree of the gyms that both of these guys represent. You've got Rufus Sport in the red corner and the blue corner. You have City Kickboxing, two of the best in the world. And the reason why I bring that in is the strength of training partners. You look at Dan Hooker, a very good friend of Israel Adesanya, but you look over at Paul Felder. I mean, think of the training partners of Rufus Sport, the Anthony Pettises. There's all so sorts of great fighters at 170, 185, 155. CM Punk. A bevy of people. CM Punk being a great training partner for professional wrestling and that alone. I mean, you'd think that would give him the charisma on the microphone, which we've seen them both transition well yeah. into MMA broadcasting. Yeah. And now CM Punk back with professional wrestling. But in terms of this fight, I think it is a great matchup. You brought it up and you really kind of hammered it home with the fact that Paul Felder really keeps his hands very high, a traditional Muay Thai stance. He'll go in, he'll get into the clinch, he can land knees, he can land elbows, he can take the fight to the ground as well. But you always have to watch out with Dan Hooker when he is on the ground. He can certainly get into great positions. He can use that length and range very well, not just standing up, but also when he's on the ground. You see a lot of rangy fighters that once they get their back to the mat, they're really in trouble. But Dan Hooker is not one of those fighters that you typically have to worry about. And as far as the odds are concerned in this one, Hooker minus 145 favorite, Paul Felder coming in at a plus 125 underdog. As far as the topology votes are concerned, just 61% going with Dan Hooker. Very close in terms of what people are thinking on finishes. Maybe it'll be a decision. And very close in terms of the picks. So this is this is pretty much cut it right down the middle. I mean, these guys are ranked, you know, six and seven respectively. They're very close. It's a tough fight to try and predict because they each seem to play into the other's strengths. They both fight a very similar type of fight. One made out quite well against Edson Barboza, one did not. And if you play that fight out a thousand times, I'm sure you get a thousand different oh, yeah. results. But in terms of this fight, Matt, who are you picking? This this is such a great one. So it's going to come down to two things, I think. I think whoever gets tired is going to get finished 10 seconds after. I really do. These guys operate at such a high level. Whoever is susceptible to... Uh, whoever does have the better cardio is going to get finished shortly thereafter. I don't see a situation where this does go to the final bell, honestly. Both guys have such good striking. They're very good finishers, uh, not only on the feet, but on the ground as well, like you brought up. Dan Hooker's got really good guillotines, too. Maybe if he, if there's a situation where he can drop Paul Felder and where Felder's trying to get back up quickly, Dan Hooker, you always got to watch your neck with him. He's really good with those front-end shows. You saw the March Casey fight. That's why he's the hangman. Exactly. We saw the March Casey fight, who definitely isn't Paul Felder, but, you know, there's a lot of spinning stuff. Uh, he was able to beat him with that. I still think 
think Felder's going to win this fight. I just feel like both guys' best position is the clinch, but Felder's better in the clinch than Dan Hooker. So if we're both in our best position, but I'm a little bit better and I'm outpointing you in that and I'm causing a little bit more damage, I feel like as the fight wears on, Felder's going to be able to get off more power shots and the power's eventually going to get to Hooker. Not that Hooker can't knock out Paul Felder. That's my whole point. This fight could end any way, really, and it's really hard to make a pick. But I just feel like Paul Felder, the power's eventually going to get to Dan Hooker, similar to how Edson Barbosa was able to, and the win by finish. I'll say late third round, early fourth. Now, with Paul Felder and comparing him and Edson Barbosa, and we'll continue a little bit because it is such a oh, good yes. fight. What Paul Felder mean? isn't going to be as volume heavy as no. Edson Barbosa, but it's just that power advantage that he's going to have in this type of fight. And the fact that he's always pressuring forward, even when he's breaking his arm, he's continuing to pressure oh. and pot shots in. There's, as he's able to. There's no quit in either one of these guys. Like, that's what I mean. I think it's going to end with a finish, and that might be the worst thing for both guys. Long, like, even the winner. This is going to be like a Poirier Gaethje. This is going to be one of those fights where you're like, oh my goodness, I remember where I was when this Diego happened. Diego Sanchez, Clay Guida. Diego Sanchez, Clay Guida. Diego Sanchez, Gilbert Melendez. Like, this is going to be one of those fights that I don't see how it could be a dud. I really don't. And not in the way that, like, okay, Lewis and Ganu can't be a dud. These guys, no matter what, are going to go forward. They're going to throw heavy shots. It's going to be a phenomenal fight. I'm just curious as to who do you think they win? Who do you think the winner fights next? I think it's pretty obvious they'll fight Dustin Poirier, and then that will be kind of your next title eliminator bout. I feel like Justin Gaethje's probably get the next one solidified, depending on Connor, of course. But I feel like that would be the logical next step for both these guys. Yeah, I would have to agree with you there. I mean, Gaethje's the first one that pops into my mind, but I think the inactivity has to play a part as far as a title fight. And, and if we're going to see somebody weigh in as a backup for yeah. the title fight, I think it would be Justin Gaethje. Of course, you'll find out more about that as we get closer to the fight. They don't really advertise it like a month in advance. No. Hey, this guy's going to weigh in just in case. But I think Justin Gaethje's going to be that fallback guy. Whereas Dustin Poirier, a fresh guy, you know, he's been training for the grappling match with Gary Tone and it fell through and now possibility that they both train together. But I think Dustin Poirier makes a lot of sense. You can make that uh, a co-main event of a pay-per-view. Oh, yeah. You can make that just main like this, a main event of a fight night. A and, and please, just make some of these fight night cards just a little bit better. Just add a little bit more name Here's value. Here's the thing with lightweight. Like, we've thrown out a bunch of potential matchups in the future. They're all good. Like, lightweight, you don't even have to be ranked, and you're probably in a must-see fight. Like, that's just how deep the division is. That's how quality the division is. And this is really going to show with this main event just how good it is. That the number six and seven guy in the world, if they were in any other division, they'd probably be fighting for a title. Like, that's just how skilled these guys are at a certain point, and I can't be more excited for this main event. Should be a great fight. Matt's going with Paul Felder. Now my turn. I'm going to disagree agree with you i'm gonna take dan hooker at home i think he's gonna be able to get the win as long as he can create distance because if he's pushed against and pushed against and pushed against we've seen him crumble somewhat recently i mean his last two fights he's looked absolutely amazing but in that barboza fight it makes you just wonder and worry a little bit if the pressure can get to him as long as he can create distance and move quite well and if he can circle away from the lead hand of paul felder yeah. that's going to make a big difference in this fight so i'm going to side with dan hooker matt you're going with felder but this is one of the fights that we've been anticipating the most lately and it's a great one and listen you are not going to want to miss the rest of our ufc auckland predictions for the main card the prelims for everything it was such a great uh you know it was a lot of fun it was to, to profile card. this card so you're not going to want to miss those matt as we always say with fight night picks let's, let's get, get into it, into it.